Hey there, today I'll be speaking about the famous baby flying motorist. Moved, moved to Sydney first with her husband and two kids. Um, however, um, she didn't last very long in Sydney as she had an affair with her husband and moved to Melbourne in um, Melbourne in Brunswick. Um, while staying there in Brunswick, she murdered um, two babies in her care. Um, as she was a baby farmer, um, which pretty much took of, took care of babies that were neglected or abandoned. I will talk about that in the next slide a bit more. Um, however, um, you can see her mugshot right there. Um, she came on trial on the 11th of April, 1893. Um, in this slide, I'll talk a bit more about baby farming and what it is. Um, in the 18, in 1890s, um, Australia was going through a global recession. Um, many people like Francis Knorr turned to the career of baby farming, which was pretty much taking care for so-called um, illegitimate children. At that time, um, women with children whose husband had died or was in jail, or the husband usually abandoned them, and if the husband was in jail or had abandoned their wife, um, the woman usually would pay another working class woman to, to mind and take care of the children if they had no family help. But it was very common in that time that many carers were not performing their duties adequately. Some reports even stated that children were usually neglected by the carer and the carer would usually feed them poorly or even this carer would simply just abandon children. Um, as you can see there from all the headings, um, she wasn't very popular in the newspapers at that time, uh, which is pretty much understandable as the crime she committed. Um, the most popular heading that was used in newspapers was the condemned woman and as you can see there I pulled out one of the articles um, from a newspaper which came which was in the Laurel Standard which was a newspaper in Victoria at that time. Um, other headings that were used by um, newspapers was the slayer, the lamb slaughter, the hardened nature, the deceitful, the sinner, the grim heart sickening, the immoral character, the loose habit. The ruthless, the notorious carer. Um, as you can see there, um, each of these headings don't need any explaining as they hold a very negative description about the um, about Francis Connor. Um, as you can see there, she wasn't very popular the in the newspapers at that time, which is um, understanding um, because of the crime she committed, as I said before. Um, however, a petition, a petition was made and signed by many um, females at that time because they believed a female should not be hanged regardless of a crime. Um, in this slide, um, in this slide I'll talk a bit more about how Frances Knorr was um, caught. Um, Frances Knorr moved very frequently while she was staying in Melbourne. Um, it was when um, she was staying in Brunswick, a, another tenant was preparing the garden bed. Um, there you can see on the right hand side was the first witness and the first person to find the, the body, um, who was Frances Clay. And um, on the left hand side you can see a bit of an illustration how the bodies were found. Um, this article was pulled out of a newspaper. Um, Francis Clay found a body disposed in his garden of a baby girl and because of that similar operations were commenced around the street because similar operations were commenced around the street and another body was found which was a baby boy. Um, the findings were traced back to Francis who was about to give birth to a second child. The police placed her in custody, however she confessed and stated that the, the babies died because of natural causes, though medical evidence stated otherwise that the, the babies died because of suffocation and there were also cord marks, electrical cord marks um, around the necks of the babies. Even though Francis Knorr killed two babies in her care, um, another person 
killed himself. Um, that was Thomas Jones, the hangman that was supposed to hang Francis um, Knorr two days before that actually happened. Thomas Jones slit his own throat and committed suicide because he, he even believed that um, any female or any woman should not be hanged regardless of their crime. Um, even the wife of the hangman stated that if her husband actually um, hanged Francis Knorr, she would leave him. Um, Francis had little support from the newspapers, but um, many females were against the hanging of Francis Knorr and even the wife of the hangman. Um, as you can see there, um, um, Thomas Jones was under extreme pressure, which led to him committing suicide. And um, um, there's a picture of him on the left hand side of the hangman, Thomas Jones. After Francis Knorr was hanged and executed, um, a letter was found in a cell, in the condemned cell, which was a confession she made, and she wanted this confession to be public. Um, on the left hand side, you can see the original confession. Um, this was um, pulled out from a news article, an age news article at that time. Um, th um, through this letter, Francis pretty much tries to deter and convey a message to people who may have similar thoughts and may want to commit similar offences. Um, this letter is very crucial as through this letter she tries to explain explain her behaviour that it was deviant and that her hanging should act as a warning and a deterrent to those who may want to commit similar offences as she committed. Um, maybe before she was hanged she wanted to do a, a good deed or wanted to do a good before she was hanged. Um, Francis Knorr was convicted for murdering two babies in a kid, but it is believed to be, even though she was convicted for murdering two babies, Reports say that 24 bodies were also expected to be located. The victims in this um, scenario and this situation were depicted as weak and portrayed as helpless, innocent and little ones. As it is quite obvious they are babies and babies are weak and helpless and obviously innocent as um, they're babies. Um, and in the newspapers, um, they were portrayed as the innocent, the weak and helpless um, infants. Even though Frances Knorr received little support from the newspapers at that time, and she was very unpopular, as you can see from the previous slides, um, she did receive um, little support from women Victoria, who were against um, the hanging of any female regardless of the crime. Um, however, the judge went against the petition and actually stated that she was a woman of a moral and questionable character and sentenced her to death as he wanted this hanging and her death to act as a warning and a deterrent to those who may want to commit similar offences and wanted, wanted others to rethink about the actions who may were following similar practices to Francis Connell. In this slide, I'm going to compare 1890s news and media to 21st century news and media. Essentially, the way the victim's body were described was quite intense and descriptive, and the offender was expressly portrayed in a negative manner in the newspaper articles. One article from the Laura Standard, which was a newspaper from that time, stated, The boy was found 8 inches deep below the surface, the body was naked, the skull was in splinters, the legs were drawn up pressed against the belly of the baby's body, the cavities of the chest stomach was open, while the skull was cracked open. The article essentially explains crime scene in a tense and scrupulous manner. However, in today's media and news, other, uh, other ways would be used. Less intense ways would be used to describe the crime scene. Describing news and crime scenes as they did in the 1890s would be abnormal in this day and age. 
as what is shown on news today is regulated by legislation and law.